Get this figure and more at the Big Bad Toy Store. Links in the description. Why is it that Grimlock, king of the Dinobots, why does he always get shafted when it comes to dinosaur modes? Well, based on the affordable Grimlock figures, can someone do Grimlock justice at an affordable price? Fuck you two. That didn't take long, right? Hey, my name is Jobby, and today we're taking a look at the Planet X PX06 Vulcan. And this figure is just the third party version of the Dinobot Grimlock from the video game Transformers Fall of Cybertron. As for that game, I'm waiting for you to say it because, because I'm pretty sure that you know what I'm gonna say, right? Here's a hint. I've never played it. Despite that, I was still looking forward to this figure, partly because I reviewed the original figure way back when, and I just really liked this design. As for that original figure, that robot mode was pretty good, but that dinosaur mode, though... But the Planet X Vulcan here promises to reverse that. And after handling this guy for more than a week because the video was unfortunately delayed, I, it's not a problem if I don't admit it, right? I can safely say that I wish it was this figure. Those many moons ago on that lonely Valentine's Day. The painting of the sculpting on this figure is awesome. The entire figure is covered in this clean metallic sheen. But that's only because this guy is the metallic version as opposed to the original version, which is currently sold out. And you know what? All the better for it because this guy actually looks way better than that original paint job. The shiny metallic paint job here just makes the figure look more rich and game accurate. Come to think of it, this robot mode looks almost identical to the original Voyager class Fall of Cybertron Grimlock. I guess that just goes to show how good the original robot mode was. I mean, check out their head scopes they're practically identical right down to the light piping and another similarity that's a little more unfortunate is the and despite this obvious pile of fuck this doesn't bother me that much and i really don't know why it might be that there's an actual groove meant for the dinosaur head and that kind of fits together nicely you know despite the fact that it's floppy as hell i really wish this whole piece could have tabbed into the back in some way definitely distracting considering the rest of the figure is nice and uh, uh. But it doesn't feel this good without some modifications. For instance, the thigh swivel here was extremely tight out of the box. So an easy modification for that is you take those screwdrivers here and you just and unscrew that just a tiny bit, not enough to break the thigh apart, but enough to loosen that up. Ooh, that's nice. And another modification that I recommend, maybe it's just my specific figure, hopefully, these hip joints were a little too loose out of the box. Again, you come to his ass, get a screwdriver and plug it right Oh. And instead of loosening it up, you would tighten it up. And from there, the hip joints feel nice and tight. It's not completely perfect, but it's enough. And that modification is especially important when we get to this big ass shield. Because without it, if you plug it into his hand like so, he would have fallen over. And my god, this shield is almost stupid big. And just for comparison, this is the shield that came with the original Grimlock figure. Pathetic. And you know what they say about big shields? Big dick. You get a sword. And the sword is also big, but not to a ridiculous degree. I think it's the perfect size. Again, the original sword for comparison. Even I'm getting a little bit jealous. But I like that original baby toy. Oh shit. It's actually really sharp. Just like the main figure itself, these weapons are extremely game accurate, except for one thing. They're not collapsible like in the games. Not really a necessary feature, and probably not even possible, but it would have made the weapon storage on this guy a little more elegant. It's not bad, thank god for that hip modification, because without it, this huge chunk of plastic would have dragged it down. And the dynamic design of these weapons make them look excellent in action poses. And of course, action poses would be impossible without a ball joint at the head. Every ball joint can be a swivel, allows them to look up and down, rotation at the arm, arm moves out, and there's a hinge joint here which allows some shifting action. Hinge joint here, swivel here, double bend at the elbow, wrist swivel, fingers can open, no index finger, swivel here. And that's probably why the back cable doesn't tap in. Oh. Previously mentioned rotation at the leg, can't move back that far. Beautiful spread. Previously mentioned thigh swivel, bend at the knee, and another bend. Calf untabs too easily. Hinge joint here. Slight hinge joint at the ankle. Ball joint at the ankle, which allows for a pretty good pivot. But we can take that pretty good pivot to a... <clears throat> if you come down here, these heel parts are supposed to help with standing up the figure, but I find them kind of unnecessary. So if you just fold them up, an even better pivot. Posability on this guy is fantastic. If his posability was a stat on this included card, it'd be a solid 10. As for his size, maybe an 8. Here's Madagagadzilla Prime, Leader Class Studio Series Grimlock, and 
the fall of Cybertron Voyager class Grimlock. Up until this point, I was pretty confident in saying that this figure holds up. But once you get to the transformation, this guy is officially obsolete. Now I should mention that the instructions included with this guy are kind of ass. Especially with this part here. What the f what does that even mean? You know what it means? How the f Now in this step, you have to get these parts all the way to here, but the problem with that is there's seemingly not enough clearance. There really is no other way but to uh, brute force it. I really hope the plastic here holds up in the long run. And the T-Rex mode is amazing. The engineering on the transformation is brilliant, but not overly complex. Not to mention this looks almost completely game accurate. It's a goddamn miracle that this dinosaur mode doesn't look like a hot dog or a complete tragedy. And amazingly enough, this dinosaur mode has no robot mode kibble at all. But if you want to get picky, his crutch is just the dinosaur chest. But fuck you, this has a tail. This tail is a third party witchcraft. Not only does it completely hide away in the robot mode, it's actually posable. Wow. His big ass head is also satisfyingly posable. Now the design of the head on this figure and the original figure is pretty much identical again. But the original figure had this light of feature that did look pretty cool, but it got in the way of it actually being a functional head and was spring loaded. It's so stupid. I don't need no light up features. Just give me a proper opening mouth. <laughs> and if you really cared about the light up feature, you do get some light piping on this guy to compensate. And while we're talking about this original figure, there is one feature that I do kind of miss. You see, the original figure was completely hollow at the bottom, so it made for a Perfect food container. None of that shit in this mode. This guy fits together nice and oh yeah! How everything fits together to form this cohesive whole is so elegant. The only real inelegant thing about this mode eh, eh, is the weapon storage. The smaller, more pathetic weapons of the original figure actually makes the weapon storage in the dinosaur mode look just tiny bit better. But that is the only ground that I will concede to this original figure. In Every way this guy is better, especially when it comes to <laughs> You can look up that far and look down that far. And the neck can extend so you can get some side to side. Rotation at the arm, arm moves out. Bend at the elbow, tinge joint here, ah shit. Rotation at the leg, his joint here allows this thigh piece to not get in the way when the leg moves out. In other words, beautiful spring. The leg was the robot arm, so it has all the posability of that. Plus this new hinge joint. The robot knee pads become these rocket thrusters. And for the tail, his joint here, his joint here, and a hinge joint here. In terms of a posable giant reptile figure, yes, this guy is no SH monster art, but it has enough articulation to pull out dynamic and expressive poses. And even though the robot had to be folded up into a ball for this mode, he's still pretty big. Madaka Godzilla Prime, Studio Series Grimlock, and the fall of Cybertron Grimlock. Just every time seeing these guys next to each other, I just... <laughs> this figure is it, guys. I am 100% sure we have finally found justice for Grimlock. And that is why I can say... Nice! I have no shame in saying that this is definitely the best Grimlock figure that I've ever owned and probably one of the best Transformers that I've ever owned. Obviously, I highly recommend this figure to any Fall of Cybertron fans or any Transformers fan in general. You owe it to yourself to get this guy. If you could afford it, that is. Thank God for the- Oh yeah, this work of art does not come cheap. But because of how great the robot mode is and how- 
amazing this dinosaur boat is. You're basically getting two figures in one. I'd say it's worth it. So if you like this video, give me a like, leave a comment, let me know what you think. And subscribe if you want some more of this shit. My funny valentine. Sweet comic valentine. You make me so oh, I'm sorry, I forgot this was a children's website. I'm sure by now you're tired of Transformers, right?